Welcome back to the vlogs. At the time of filming this, I've got no idea <laughs> when I'm going to post this. Um, bit of a strange time, obviously very sad time for not only us here in the UK, but I feel like all over the world, the Queen's passing has affected everybody. Obviously we were away in Kefalonia when we heard the really sad news, so I'm not quite ready to publish my Kefalonia vlog yet. I always find it quite hard to put into words how <laughs> how I'm feeling. I didn't I didn't feel like I didn't expect to feel as upset about losing our queen as I do or as I did. Um I guess it's just she's always she's always been there. I think Freddie said in her lovely stories that she was like a fairy godmother. You, we all just kind of presumed she was eternal for nearly everyone that I know. The queen has been the queen for our entire lives um, and yeah it's just such a huge monumental change it's very strange if you guys aren't from the UK it's hard to put into words just like this weird feeling everywhere ev like I almost feel guilty if I feel happy for a few minutes I don't know it's just very strange obviously I didn't know the Queen personally but she obviously had such a huge impact on the whole country and it's being felt by everyone, everywhere that I go. And it does feel a little bit weird just carrying on vlogging as normal, but you know, we have to, we have to, as the Queen would say, keep calm and carry on. And hopefully if you are feeling a little bit strange right now, then the vlogs will be a little bit of normality. So I shall try to bring that in the videos, but if I don't seem 100%, that's why. It's just, yeah, it's a very strange and upsetting time. Uh, so we got back from Kefalonia on Saturday. It is now Monday and I've done my usual Monday morning routine, Pilates, which I felt like I needed this week. I really needed it after, I mean, it's only a three hour flight to and from Kefalonia, but maybe I wasn't sleeping very well while we were there because um, all of my muscles just felt super duper tight. And I actually said to Alex, my teacher, I asked her if this was normal because basically I've been waking up in the mornings and I felt like I need to like stretch out my chest and when I do it my I can almost feel my ribs like clicking apart and it's so strange so I said to her oh my gosh is this normal <laughs> have I got something wrong with my ribs and she said it's probably because I lie like <laughs> I lie on my side and I hunch myself, I like close my body off when I sleep and then when I'm on my laptop I'm probably like crunching over as well so she was recommending that every morning I do like some chest opening stretches which I kind of do anyway but they feel really good so if anyone else <laughs> has a crunched up chest it's fine, don't worry. I think there's um like a bl uh, those pillows you can get in yoga, they're like oblong shaped pillows. I feel like I've got one in the house somewhere. Um, you can like lie on them and open up your shoulders and open your chest So maybe I'll pop one of those in our bedroom and do some stretches. So that's that was Pilates. That was great um, And then I did quite a lot of shopping in the Dalesford um, Shop because obviously we've been away. We don't have any fresh fruit and veg or milk or eggs in, this, in the house So I stocked up on all of that um, they have also got their new autumn table linens in and autumnal colours in this beautiful, I think they called it the beehive print and it was so lovely. Do I need another table linen set? No. But do I have any autumnal table linen sets? <laughs> no. Um, and then they also had the uh, new like greens and creams and browns in at the Bamford store by where I go in to do my Pilates. I've got on my lovely Varley super cosy uh, pullover this morning. It's not really that chilly but it definitely feels like the seasons are changing. The leaves are all starting to go brown, the leaves are falling and you guys know how I just love the change in seasons in this neck of the woods. So 
I'm gonna be just catching up on emails as usual today. We've actually got the guys from Harley Botanic, uh, the people that made my greenhouse, we've got them over today. They're doing a little bit of troubleshooting. They're seeing how they can fix some of the bits that aren't quite right with my greenhouse. I believe I'm also putting in some shelving, um, some higher up shelving, because I realized I will need a little bit more storage space. Oh, should I go and have another look at the Dalesford Garden Center? Maybe I will, just because I've got a little bit of time to kill this morning. Yesterday- you can tour and includes a lot of Nashville history from this time period. <laughs> that was me researching um, a place in America that we are going later in the year, which I'm very excited about. Booked the flights this morning. Yes, um, yesterday I was not like ready to start properly vlogging, but I did film a few clips, which I'll pop on the screen here. Charlie and I went to the Cornbury House uh, Horse Trials, which was really fun. Um, we were invited by Fiona Howden, who lives in um, the incredible Cornbury House. It's actually the same location as Wilderness Festival. Their estate and their land is just astronomical. It is so, there's so much of it. It's just the most beautiful grounds. And they hosted a horse trials event there for the last four days. We went along to the last day, which was more of kind of like a friends and family day. There were a few little stalls, diddly squat Jeremy Clarkson's farm shop had like a pop-up. Um, the actual Cornbury house. They have an amazing kitchen garden, so they do a lot of like their own food um, there as well. They even had an asado. Uh, we met some really interesting people, lots of like horse trainers and horse breeders, riders, and it was just a really nice, fun day out. So I did, did capture a couple of clips. Yeah, so you guys are now uh, up to date with my activities since Catalonia. I'm really rambling, aren't I? Anyway, I'm gonna go and have a quick look around the garden center and then head home. on which I don't normally do on Mondays um, but I thought I would actually because I'm a little bit self-conscious at the moment because I have got quite a few you can really you can really see them in certain lights and certain angles um, under skin blemishes at the moment which is very sad I've had I've not had this amount of blemishes in one time in years I think maybe one of the sun creams that I was using in Catalonia might have been a little bit off um, and it was literally just the last day that these all suddenly erupted so I thought I'd pop on a little bit of makeup. I'm trying out a new full coverage uh, concealer from Bobbi Brown which does seem to have covered them all very well although obviously blemishes are raised so you can still see the texture which is a little bit annoying, um, and then nothing else I don't think was new. Uh, well, I haven't actually used my Dior Dior Riviera Natural Bronze. I hadn't got started with that one yet. I finished off a Galan one while we were away, um, and it's a really nice natural bronze. Doesn't have any sparkle to it, and I feel like you want something a bit more natural as we go into autumn. And also from Dior, I used their Five Color Eyeshadow Palette, I used the kind of champagne colour and this slightly more brown tone. Again, nice and autumnal. Ooh, and then I switched to my autumn lip colour, which is Tom Ford Sable Smoke. I've been using this for years. Um, but then I wanted to make it a bit pinker, so I added some fascinator on top. So that is what I have used, yeah, would normally just be hair back, no makeup on a Monday because Monday is my admin day, but 
the little blemishes got me all self-conscious. So I normally do this thing um, where I don't tell you <laughs> where I'm going away on holiday until we actually go. I don't know why, I feel like I like keeping these things as a surprise, but I'm not going to do that this time. You've probably already heard in the snippet that I shared in the car earlier, I was listening to a video sharing tips all about Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee is where I'm going to be going just after my birthday. So at the very end of November, early December, which does mean that Vlogmas <laughs> will potentially start in Nashville this year, which is totally crazy, um, but will be so much fun. Uh, we are actually going to see the piano guys. You guys know I'm obsessed. Charlie and I are both obsessed with the piano guys. And I found out about four or five months ago that they were going to be performing in Nashville at the end of November. So that is the main reason for the trip. But also I just, I really do love exploring different parts of the US. Annoyingly, actually, the website where I'm trying to buy the tickets to actually go and see the piano guys keeps crashing on me every time I get to the payment page. Um, maybe if any of you guys are in the US, you could try it for me. <laughs> Let me know down below if you're willing to help me out with this because I feel like it's just not liking me because I'm in the UK. I've tried using my Surfshark, it doesn't like me. Imagine if I book, I've just paid for these flights to Nashville and imagine if I couldn't actually get tickets to the piano guys. <sighs> I think I'd have to wait outside the concert hall and just like pray that someone doesn't show up or someone's selling their tickets at the door. But um, the reason why I mentioned it is because if any of you guys have been um, or if you live there, then I would love, love, love so much your recommendations, particularly when we went to Charleston and Alabama in February. Oh my gosh, that was February. Your recommendations were best so I'd be so grateful if you have any for Nashville or just like slightly outside because we have got five or six days which is quite a long time um so if you do live there or have been there is that too long do we need to do an internal flight to New York for a couple of days or yeah just any words of wisdom that you can share with us I'd be very very grateful for and what is the weather like in November December who knows? If you can hear some banging in the background, by the way, it's because they are actually doing the changes in the greenhouse as we speak. I didn't know if they were just coming today to like take measurements and stuff, but no, they're actually, I think they're replacing the door and putting the shelves up in the greenhouse or glass house today, which is very exciting. Um, and you probably <laughs> saw on my way back from Dalesford, I, I did snip a few branches. Uh, so I'm going to make a nice autumnal flower display, a wildflower display. And speaking of flowers, I have got something very exciting to share with you. Well, my darlings, did you guess what my <laughs> exciting uh, thing that I wanted to show you was? It is very hard to show you in this light because it's very silhouette -y. But introducing you to the Autumn Crunch bouquet. This is my new, my new bouquet designed with the wonderful team at Flowered. We wanted to update the perennial millennial, which you've been able to uh, pick up all throughout the spring and summer for something a little bit more autumnal. And there are so many elements here, as always, inspired by our garden here in the Cotswolds and a few of my favourite things. So first of all, we have got these gorgeous deep hydrangeas. Now, something that was really important to me for this bouquet was that it would be super duper, hello my taxi, hello my biggest boy, super duper long lasting and not just long lasting while it's fresh but also dry out beautifully as well. So if we just spin around, here's one I made earlier. These hydrangeas, you've probably seen them in the background um, of <laughs> loads and loads of videos. These have actually been here. They are real fresh hydrangeas that just dried out. And I'm probably gonna do a reel on how to dry out hydrangeas to keep them looking absolutely perfect, like these ones here. Um, yeah, these have probably been here for like eight months and they're not showing any signs of falling apart or disintegrating. Obviously where they're crisp and crunchy, they are fairly fragile. Like if I was to grab it, obviously they would just, um, the leaves would probably fall off, but you can really keep darker colored hydrangeas 
for months and months if not years they dry out absolutely beautifully but my number one tip is that they have to be a dark colored hydrangea i've tried it with the light ones for example over here these ones didn't do too badly um but you can see that the leaves do curl up a little bit more with the lighter colored hydrangeas these greeny purple ones are okay i'd give them maybe a six out of ten um whereas the more kind of burgundy colored ones i would give them a 10 out of 10. White, pink and blue, they really don't work at all. Um, but I think this is such a gorgeous, very warm, lovely autumnal colour. So this has been at the base of the Autumn Crunch bouquet. Something that I absolutely love seeing at this time of year as well is how the leaves change colour in the hedgerows and on the trees throughout the next few months here in the Cotswolds. So I wanted to bring that to the bouquet as well. These are actually preserved leaves, which is such a fascinating process. They are real leaves but they've been treated in a way that means that they will last a very very long time so once the fresher parts of this bouquet start to die back which sadly they will such as the roses then you can keep the leaves you can keep the hydrangeas and turn them into a different style Ooh. My apologies, I was distracted by a phone call. Um, what was I saying? Yes, so the fresh bits, such as the gorgeous rose and the ferns, you can just pluck those out when um, they start to die back and just rearrange everything in a beautiful way so you've got a gorgeous dried bouquet. Okay, and the final element of the Autumn Crunch bouquet is possibly my favourite. And when we were designing this, this was one of my most important elements I wanted included. And it is a poppy seed head. Now, by the sounds of it there might still be some seeds in here so I can probably save those and sprinkle them next well actually I think you sprinkle them at this time of year need to double check but these also dry out so so beautifully we saw some ginormous poppy seed heads at the florist at Soho farmhouse and they had gone completely brown and crispy and these will hopefully do the same if uh, looked after properly and as I said I'm going to do a little reel on how to ensure that this bouquet dries out absolutely perfectly so that will I think we'll film it tomorrow so probably won't be up on my Instagram just yet but definitely keep an eye out for that if you'd like to know my tips on drying out your autumn crunch bouquet but these are just absolutely beautiful and in Chris at Christmas time, you can spray them gold or you can just add them to, you can actually make little decorations out of them if you want to. I just think they're absolutely beautiful and these are some of the biggest poppy seed heads that I've ever seen. So I'm really thrilled to have these in the bouquet. Now I think my discount code, uh, which is £10 off, is still active. So I'll leave that, all the info for that down below. But yeah, this is the Autumn Crunch bouquet and I think it's rather gorgeous, so I hope you guys love it as well. And just before we finish talking about flowers, just like we did last time with the perennial millennial, we wanted to have a few different options. So this one, if you really are um, just wanting a few lovely elements to dry out, this is a really nice option. This bouquet is slightly smaller. It's got the hydrangeas and the poppy seed heads and then also some branches. So everything in this mini bouquet will um, dry out absolutely beautifully. So you've got a couple of different options to fill your house with autumnal blooms. Excuse me drying the cleaning cloths on the aga. Very excitingly, we've decided that our tradition is going to be that the aga will get turned off every year after my mum's birthday, which is at the end of May, and turned back on again after our summer holiday to Kefalonia. So now that we're back from Kefalonia, the aga is switched back on, which is wonderful. I had another portion of my lovely courgette soup for lunch. And yesterday afternoon, I went down into the garden, picked some dahlias. It is so overgrown down there. I'm going to have to go down there again this afternoon and do some more picking. <laughs> Charlie's got an assistant. Ah, a bit of a shame about all this thing we use plastic. I was going to say. But I don't know. It, uh, they should really, these should really be in like um, brown paper, I think. Yes. I've got a really good friend here. Daddy. Um, whenever we get back from holiday, they're so demanding. They're aren't? so needy. Lovely. Every time I go anywhere near chicken, look, he's looking ac ac across very jealously. I'm going to come and join in the fun, actually. I just, I don't want to be left out. It takes a lot for me to leave my spot on no. the sofa, but I he's will coming. do it. Because I think that my mummy is going to spend some time on the floor. So, oh. yes, hello, my sweetest child. Oh. My what sweet, lovely dogs. little stretch. What moody dogs. Oh, <laughs> you're so lovely, my children. 
Right, so what have you got here, mate? What we have are these antique brass. We've got one of these at Straw Top. Yes. It started to happen, actually, where at Straw Top, we, because we were on it to be perfect, we yes. had stuff put in there, and then you're like, oh, I really like this. And you're like, <laughs> I'd like it at home. Yeah. So um, that happened in the kitchen where we've got, it's more like this size over the sink. It's as much sort of for display, really, the one over the sink at Straw Top, because it's got a few pots and pans on. Yes. And I think it's got the cleaning brushes, the dish brush. Right. So it's from Duval, who are a kitchen brand. Uh -huh. um, we've obviously purchased these. It's nothing, sadly, nothing that we've been sent. But, um, <laughs> so sad. This one is for your greenhouse, isn't it? Yes. So the way it works is this. It's quite clever. So this goes in here. So it sits, it'll just sit on your new display area, mm -hmm. like that against the wall. And then you've got five hooks for your various... <laughs> you look like a toddler the way that you're yeah. sitting. Um, you just bend your knees or something. Why? Well, like you just look like a baby. Well, I mean, that. <laughs> um, yeah, you, uh, you, you're you going to stick your trials on these. This is a very boring... Um, section of your vlog. <laughs> I think um, everybody loves these one, little this, integrations. This one is hopefully going to be, so we're sort of slowly bringing the kitchen to be to our sort of... Is that going in our kitchen? Yeah, that's the idea. Darling, we did not discuss this. The idea is it's going to go in the kitchen. Now, the, every now and again, there's some things that I deliberately don't discuss with you because I know that... That's too that, long. I, well, no, because I think you'll find in a minute, you'll realise why it needs to be this length. Um, come on then, so come I and show me. Shame about all this you do realise that there's a pipe at the back of our arga? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a lowly. He's a lowly. You're lovely. Look at his teeth. <laughs> You're such a good kisser. Your breath is quite bad. Can you tell your friends at Spotlight that they really need to bring out doggy toothbrushes? And if they could do some puppy or whitening strips, I'd love it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, mm -hmm. oh, you're my best friend. Pardon? Apa <coughs> So the idea is, so we are going to have these tiles redone because we're not a fan of them anymore. Mm -hmm. And we, just to be clear, we didn't put them there. They were, no. uh, they were here when we moved in. Mm -hmm. And they're not 100% sort of to our taste. So we're going to retile that. And when we retile that, this will need to come off. Now, what you may not realise is dun, this dun, dun. actually doesn't do anything. So this is... Full of spiders. It, it's All it is <gasps> is for the old design. So obviously when it was gas... Yes or oil, probably just oil actually. Does your mum's one not even have one of them? Yeah, so actually gas ones don't have them. The oil ones did, so this is like a feature that you actually have to pay for extra. Oh, for goodness sake. To make sake. it look traditional. <laughs> right. But if you notice up here, it's already been cut into to incorporate, it's a bit messy up here, but to incorporate the lighting. Yeah. You're gonna have the lighting redone. So when we have this off, we'll have a hole cut through here so it goes through there. Oh, can we just not put it back on? Well, I think you'll find I it think does that'll, make it look no, quite traditional. No, I think that'll look really silly. I think we just get rid of it. Well, okay, we, we decide at the time we could get rid of it if we want. It I would think... look so silly with a hole in the middle. No, but you won't see the hole. You won't see the hole because this no. will be up here. Right? Take so it away, actually, mate. No, um, we've got to be able to see the rail. See that? Well, it's only that little bit of rail you wouldn't see. And then either side, you've got three hooks either side. But I think the rail needs to be lower down. I know we're changing the tiles, but it needs to be lower than this. I don't know. Well, th these are all the elements that you decide as a man, it's okay, my bonbon! Bon. He's getting nervous because of the high-pitched noise from the washing yeah. machine. You also have to remember that the height of this to dictates what you hang from it. Yes. So if, if we decide, for example, it gives us the options, we either hang some... I've got some nice... This isn't exactly what we hang, but we've got some nicer ones of these, mm -hmm. potentially, or, depending on the height, our lovely pots and pans, which is a shame. We've got these beautiful pots and pans, and you don't see them. So that's the decision that we'll make. 
The only thing is, for example, I've had to put all of these in the dishwasher that's today because they get really greasy. Yeah. That, that's a kitchen, isn't it? The kitchen yeah. is where you cook and you have to clean the kitchen. We, we, we do clean the kitchen regularly. I know what you mean, but it's also the convenience of just grabbing it from there yeah. and from a visual perspective. But anyway, it's, I ordered this because I was ordering the other one. I thought, well, I'm not paying two lots of delivery. This is probably about three or four months off being actually fitted because we've got to do a lot of work before that. Um, Okie dokie. But that's the idea. Um, and I just think, yeah, I mean, we need to figure out what sort of tiles we want to go Didn't on Didn't we here. say we liked the idea of getting, is it Rachel Dean or Rachel Stein? But Rachel for her Dean, to yeah, create some flowers. tiles with the pressed only, flowers from our garden. The only thing with her tiles is I think they could get a bit lost behind there and they're quite expensive. I think personally... Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. We need to make a mind up. I think the Rachel Dean ones could look amazing in, when we redo one of the bathrooms upstairs. Oh, but they're very expensive. I think we get a few of her plain ones, like not too dissimilar size to this, and then like, this one's got acorns, this one's got salvia, this one's got mint, or you know, but get her to make Maybe. them out of pressings from our garden. Crab apples could have like a different tile for each season. Yeah, I can Literally just ditch just that. Sits there doing nothing. What do awkward. you think, my most handsome friend? You're looking very scruffy. Daddy, I'm really sad that we can't take part in the scruffiest dog in the Cotswolds competition at Dalesford Harvest Festival. I've been growing my hair especially. I have just made my pumpkin spice latte as my little afternoon pick me up. I had a few comments asking how I make my pumpkin spice latte um, because a lot of you have said that when you make it, it's too sweet. Now, I love sweet coffees. Normally, if I have an oat milk latte, I will put in two sugars. So I do have a sweet tooth. Uh, but when I make my pumpkin spice latte, I do not add sugar. The syrup and it's actually so easy to make a pumpkin spice latte. The only thing that makes it a pumpkin spice latte is firstly, the pumpkin mug, but secondly, the syrup. And that is actually a sugar syrup, so you don't need to add any additional um, sugar. And aside from that, it's really just my usual oat milk latte. So uh, yes, there we go, very exciting. And you may have seen in the background, I was just unboxing this rather wonderful new tray. This was actually advertised to me on Instagram. I have been purchasing quite a few things from my Instagram uh, sponsored stories lately, and I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. I have got a little bit of a thing for trays. I wonder if it might look quite nice on our little poof by the um, by the stove. Maybe, I'm not sure. But to be honest, you could, well, you could actually choose whether you wanted a wicker base or a wooden base. And I thought that a wooden base would be more practical for actually carrying drinks and things. And also, I do like to take my little bud vases down to the kitchen garden on a tray when I'm picking fly flyers, fly <laughs> when I'm picking flowers. And yes, it's just rather lovely. This was a little gift that was added into my order. It is one of these gorgeous, very typical Provencial, um, provincial soaps. I remember when we went into this little town in the south of France, almost this time last year, it was full of lovely little soaps like this. They smell so good. Great for just tucking in your underwear drawer. And this was much more affordable and much quicker to arrive than my Mrs. Alice tray, which is currently up in my dressing room. I keep looking at the clock or my phone expecting it to be like 5 p.m. but it's still only half past two. It is honestly getting dark already which is such an autumn cliche to say. What's going on here? Oh, who knows? <laughs> Not bothered about my hair today but seeing as I have just made a pumpkin spice latte I thought I would share with you. Are you going to want to come and sit on your mummy's lap? Come on in my boom boom. Oh you're so lovely. Do other people have different languages just for their dogs or is it just me? A lot of my friends and family understand my dog language, but 
It's quite unique, isn't it, Masoo? If you've got a language for your dogs, leave me a dog language sentence down below and I'm gonna say a dog sentence now and if any of you can translate it, I'll do an easy one, then you're officially my kind of person. Although if I say this, they're gonna go mad. I'll put Dickie down and then I'll say it. <laughs> okay, this is me revealing what a nerd I am. The sentence says, you tell her. Go on, in. you tell her somebody. You tell her. <laughs> okay, well, they're outside now for a little while. So what I was going to say was that I thought I would share a few little autumn bucket list um, ideas with you. I like the idea of at the start of every season having a little bit of a seasonal bucket list and they can be the simplest of things from making a pumpkin spice latte to just going for a walk and feeling the crunch of autumn leaves under your foot. These are the things that I feel would be lovely to experience throughout the autumn months. So a few things which might be on my autumn bucket list as well as making pumpkin spice latte, going for an early morning or afternoon golden hour walk. When the air is crisp, you can see your breath. You've got a lovely cozy knit on, a nice jacket, and you hear and feel the crunch of autumn leaves under your foot. Feet. That is definitely something that is on my autumn bucket list. Um, a couple of things I'm going to tick off today, the latte, and making an autumnal, wild, seasonal, um, foraged flower display. We're probably going to, I'm probably going to do that later on this afternoon. I think it's just slightly drizzling with rain, so when that stops. Uh, something else will be to make an apple crumble or an apple pie with apples from the garden and also to make something, I don't know what yet, but make something delicious with the pumpkins from my garden. I'm actually going to google autumn bucket list. Take a fall drive, jump in a pile of leaves, go apple picking, visit a pumpkin patch, make caramel apples. Make homemade apple sauce. Yes, I did that last year, didn't I? And it was amazing. Have a bonfire. Make an apple crisp. Ooh. Make a new soup. That's a nice idea. Decorate the house for fall. Watch a football game. That is not on my bucket list. Carve a pumpkin. Watch a Halloween movie. Attend a fall festival, the Dalesford Festival, very sadly, well, understandably, has been postponed. It should have been next weekend, this weekend, um, but it's postponed till spring now. Uh, have a pumpkin drink, rake some leaf, make pumpkin bread. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. I have to say, overall, I don't love Fashion Week content, but oh my goodness. The reels that Leonie Han has been posting are just sensational. <laughs> she just looks spectacular and I love following what she's doing at Fashion Week. Other things to add to an autumn bucket list, maybe making a display of flowers from fresh dahlias from the garden, finding the perfect autumn winter coat, turning on the wood stove for the first time. <gasps> And a roast, a Sunday roast, oh my goodness. I feel like maybe we'll have our first Sunday roast of the year this weekend. I think it's this weekend Charlie's family are all coming up, in which case we will definitely be having a roast. Yay! I thought I would also let you know that Dexter is very much, very much enjoying his new dog bed from Jules. Are you enjoying that? I can see your crown jewels, my big boy. Have you ever seen such a relaxed sausage dog? I can see your teeth, young man. I can see your tungly tunglies. You're ridiculous. 
You are absolutely ridiculous. But yes, this is Dexie's new bed from Jules, and it is safe to say <laughs> it has got Dexie's very firm seal of approval. <laughs> okay, my darlings, up in the dressing room again, and <gasps> oh my goodness, I am wearing jeans. If you are a regular viewer of this channel, you will know that I do not historically wear jeans. I find them overall uncomfortable, hard to style, and I always just think, why wear jeans when you can wear a dress? But I have to say, first of all, I think it was at the Burley Horse Trials, um, I saw someone wearing these jeans, they are Holland Cooper, and I just thought, oops, I missed a button. I just thought they were the most flattering jeans I had ever seen. They are super, super high-waisted, um, which means also that I don't have anything really pressing in on my tummy because I, um, whether it's just being bloated all the time or from my endometriosis, I do not like anything pressing down on me here. In fact, even the Adenola sports leggings that I was wearing earlier today, I had to get them off because they were just too tight around this area. Um, with Holland Cooper trousers, I have to size up because they are very um, slim around the hips in particular. So that is something worth bearing in mind. But I just think they're super duper flattering. They've got lovely detail, pockets, this little zip detail here, double button. Do you know what? I could even go up another size, I reckon. And this little HC embroidery here. And this like round detail on the bum, which is what a lot of leggings have, which makes them very flattering. Uh, so as well as these jeans, I'm just gonna show you a few new in bits which are just kind of autumn essentials. Nothing particularly on trend, but very countryside kind of style. The things that I will hopefully just be living in over the next coming months. So first of all, let's talk about this uh, knit that I'm wearing right here. This is from Jules. I fell in love, oh sorry. I fell in love with the colour of this to begin with. It's kind of like a rugby pullover style type of thing. I love the fact that on the neckline, the collar is just completely um, open here. It's not like a proper collar going all the way down. Love the little nod to some pink on the sleeves there. At this point in time, I don't know if Charlie is gonna go back to playing rugby this season. I really hope he does because he absolutely loves playing rugby, um, but he did get injured a couple of years ago and hasn't really played, not like seriously, but hasn't probably played since then and obviously moving and living in the Cotswolds. The local teams here are really good and the, the men are like, a lot of them, a lot of them are like farmers, handsome big men, so I don't know if uh, compared to the private school volumes that Charlie used to play rugby with. I don't know if it's like, you know, a different, different level of competition. But anyway, if Charlie does play rugby again this season, which I would love to think that he will do, maybe I'll add that to my autumn bucket list, going to watch a rugby game with a flask of hot coffee, getting all bundled up in my layers, then this is exactly the kind of thing that I would wear. Uh, any kind of outdoor sporting event, if we go to any more horse trials or competitions or anything like that. This is the perfect outfit along with the new Holland Cooper boots, which I did show you before we went to Catalonia. This is my lighter color. I wore the darker ones to the event. I get really scared putting my hand into boots because it is spider season. I mean, these are just absolutely gorgeous. Hopefully you can see, they're just really classic, typical tan boots. They've got them in the darker brown color. I believe they might have them in black as well. Um, flat boots, really lovely gold detail on the heel. I just feel like they're the kind of thing that are, again, an autumn wardrobe staple. <laughs> I've just realized that I just said that I size up in Holland Cooper denim, but actually, Maybe it's the fact that I haven't worn jeans in so long and I'm no longer a size six on the bottom or on the hips. Maybe you don't need to size up. I just have sized up and not realized because I've not worn jeans for so long. Um, so yeah, 
I think, to be honest, I need to start getting Holland Cooper jeans or bottoms in a size 10. And pre-COVID, I was a size 6. Here's another Holland Cooper piece, which again, I saw at the Burley Horse Trials. They had the most amazing stand there, you probably saw in the vlog, and I saw this knit and I thought that is a perfect knit um, for autumn winter. I just love a classic cable knit. Um, it's got this really lovely crisscross design. You've got the iconic Holland Cooper gold buttons. There were quite a lot of people wearing Holland Cooper at the Cornbury Park, uh, Cornbury House horse trials yesterday as well. It's very much the equestrian brand of choice for literally everybody. I like the length of the Holland Cooper knits. They're a little bit shorter, I believe, in length to the knits that they did last year. Yeah, look, so this is this is one of my ones from last year and it's a good couple of inches longer. I do love the longer ones, but I feel like still this is a really good length. I have done something crazy to my hair, but I love just how long the sleeves are. I love how it fits on the shoulders. I love this super cozy uh, neckline and you've got this little HC logo here. Look how gorgeously soft this material is. It is so soft, so cozy. Okay, another really classic piece of knitwear here. This is from Reese, another of my go-to brands at this time of year. I love how thick um, and like open the sleeves are. It's a really nice detail. They bring out a version of this knit every single year. I've got it for the last two years and I just think they're really, really classic. It's also a great layering piece. I've got some lovely um, kind of outerwear bits here from Jules. The kind of jacket that you just keep in your car or, you know, on the hooks behind the door and be super snuggly. This has got a really lovely fabric pattern. It's like a beautiful tweed. You can pull your sleeves down if it gets really cold. You've got these really fantastic big pockets, perfect for any loose change, your car keys, dog bags. Okay, there is a strap coming out here and I do not know where this connects to. This is a real mystery to me. I have no idea what that connects into. I love the pheasants on the lining for this as well. It's a really nice thick material. So on chilly, crunchy leaves, autumn walks, this is just gonna be absolutely perfect. Oh my goodness, I can't decide what I love more, the jacket or the cape. So this is the cape version, not quite as thick as the jacket that I just shared with you. I love a cape at this time of year. I find myself reaching for them so often. Um, it's just a really nice way of adding an extra layer of warmth and coziness, but without feeling too like you're strapped in. I find them a lot more comfortable. You've got a lot more movement. And this one is just absolutely gorgeous. You've got this really beautiful kind of velvet trim detail this super big and cozy neckline. Again, the lovely kind of tweed material, and every now and then you just get a glimpse of the very fun pheasant lining. So let me know which you prefer, the coat or the cape. I absolutely love them both. I feel like this is really the best of the English countryside, countryside brands. Jules, Holland Cooper, obviously like Beaufort and Blake. Fairfax and Favour, Shuffle, who am I missing? Le Chameau, all of my favourites. I've just come downstairs and Dexy is positioned half out of his bed and half in his bed. Explain yourself, my funny sausage. Are you having a bad hair day, my boy? Are you having a bit of a scruffy hair day? Oh, and the little one has come to join. The little one has come to join us. Should we kiss each other? Hmm. You are my best friends. I just adore you so much. I just absolutely adore you. Okay, so we are outside in the greenhouse and I've got a couple of little updates to share with you in here. I was not expecting everything to be done today, but the Hartley Botanic team have been here all day and they have put right all of the little niggles which Charlie and I had about the greenhouse and it is now absolutely 
perfect so i'm going to show you the changes and the improvements they have made today my baby so we'll start off with the door handle in fact if i take a step back it's actually the entire door that they have replaced today we didn't love having the plaque up on the top there and we also wanted to add our own antique brass door handle so they took the old door away they built this one in their warehouse where they make everything completely bespoke and last time they were here we gave them this Jim Lawrence door handle which they've now added which I think looks so much better and it fits in really beautifully with the honey colour of the Haunton stone. Don't worry, mummy hasn't forgotten about you my bonbon. The door no longer squeaks <laughs> which is fantastic. Um, they've done a really good clean up job this time no little pencil marks anywhere they've actually replaced quite a few of the upright pieces replaced some of the don't know what you call it but <laughs> my non-technical terms the joining bits because in some places they weren't quite joining up perfectly whereas now they do and very excitingly, although I'm no longer sure where I'm gonna put my lovely lemon or lime tree, but we have now got high up shelving. So we've got the shelf here, and then a shelf that goes along just to this section here, which I think is gonna be really useful for storing my terracotta plant pots. The shelves that are gonna go down here, the wooden shelves, I had a call with the company that's going to make those today. Hopefully we'll have them in a couple of weeks time. It's gonna look amazing once they're in. Um, but the reason I didn't go for shelves high up initially was because I thought they might obstruct the view. But I have to say, when I first walked in here, I didn't even notice them. They're so subtle. Obviously when I've got lots of stuff on them, they'll be a lot more visible. Um, but we've got so much glass here, such a huge vista of the kitchen garden that I really didn't feel that that would get ruined by adding a shelf here. So really, really happy that I've now got those. Um, they actually replaced an entire section here because they noted a, noticed a dent in it. And they have covered up some of the little screws which um, were all, which were different colors before. So overall, it looks absolutely gorgeous now. I need to do a little bit of moving some bits around, a little bit of tidying, add some of these pots up onto the new shelves. And now Charlie and I have got to figure out what we do with this tree, because it doesn't really tuck into the corner anymore because of the shelving. I'm not sure if the fruit on here is ever going to really properly ripen, so I'm wondering if we get rid of the tree. I don't know if you guys have got any ideas of what we can do with the lemon slash lime tree. Please let me know. So just five minutes of popping a few bits up here. I have put some of my terracotta plum pots, a few of the vases, the string. I've got my little metal bunny rabbit, which is from the Amazon handmade section. Some of my trugs, my basket, and a few more pots up on this side. I think, unfortunately, a few of my seedlings are going to have to go in the compost because they've not survived too well. But actually, these ones over here are doing really well. We've got some, that actually looks like, oh, this must be fennel. I think this one must be fennel. Uh, we've got some beetroot, turnips doing really well, some chicory. Very gray skies today. Um, but then down here, even though the leaves have been eaten, there's some radishes, ooh, radishes here ready to harvest. The winter lettuce has done really well. The rocket, there's a few edible leaves. A few of them have been nibbled some nice big radishes in this one these little salad these lettuce leaves are doing really well and there's a few good sized courgettes here which I can harvest tomorrow morning I'm going to get changed into a shirt and shorts because even though it's cloudy it is ridiculously warm today probably mid 20s which is bonkers but I've come back in here now to grab my gloves there's one. Oh. There we go, a matching pair and a trug. Because after being away for so long, there is quite a lot that needs harvesting. 
and also today is green bin collection day which means I'm going to fill up all the green bins with shriveled up pumpkin leaves, overgrown flowers and everything else so a little bit of garden maintenance is in order. I'm going to need some secateurs and some scissors. I thought I would also, before I exhaust myself with gardening duties, just give you a little um, early autumn slash late summer herbaceous border update. So at the moment, the real standout stars are most definitely the anemones. These are probably five foot tall. I remember when Nicholson's told us they were going to get this big. I didn't believe them because <laughs> I've never seen anemones this tall, but they really do look spectacular. And something else which is really impressive about how the border has been designed is how everything has different layers. So down here we've got the Origeron just beautifully tucked away down here in the border. I always forget the name of this one. Is it Scabia? possibly, which the bees are loving, little honeybees. We've got obviously the geraniums on that corner over there. Some of these I'm not too sure on the names of, but these are also really starting to get beautifully tall in the middle of the borders at this time of year. The grass is almost completely overshadowed by some of the taller blooms. Um, we cut back the salvia, but we're starting to get a little bit of a second flourish, much to this bumblebee's ex <laughs> excitement. Look at Dexy trying to come through to where mummy's talking. Dexy, there's a far easier way to get round here, silly boy. You are such a dingbat. The euphorbia starting to get tall again. I didn't realise that this bloomed in autumn maybe it doesn't maybe it just has a little bit of a growth spurt um the purple is looking absolutely gorgeous down here from this looks like a kind of lavender but maybe it's a cat mint and then the geraniums again the flag on the church half mast during the 10 days of mourning and then the archway is looking very full of crab apples. I'm sure there are some old wives tales about it being a very cold winter if there's lots of crab apples and lots of berries on the bushes. Maybe I'll make some crab apple jelly. If you've got any nice crab apple recipes, let me know. And the green bin in situ, ready for my duties. I think I'll do the fun jobs first. I'll do a little bit of harvesting. Got lots of beans to harvest, those courgettes, some raspberries. I need to also put some supports underneath my pumpkins because apparently they can get a little bit mouldy if they're on damp soil. But if, like us, you've had a very dry summer, your courgettes and your squash might have, might have this powdery mildew on them. And to be honest, I don't think the pumpkins actually need their leaves anymore. I might be wrong, but you can definitely snip away any leaves that have got powdery mildew because they're no use to the plant anymore and it helps your kitchen garden look a lot tidier. Maybe I'll do that job first because then it'll be easier to see anything that needs harvesting once these big damaged leaves are out of the way. So as you can see, the chaps are here trimming the hedges and one of the byproducts is, we think it might be a damson um, tree that is growing through the hedgerow and it is providing me with some wonderful fodder for my flower display that's going to go in the entrance hall. <laughs> Did you say you think this is damson? So we reckon this is damson, so I'm just taking a few of these branches and I'm going to add them to some bits from the wildflower meadow and make it into a lovely display. Sparkly shimmer on our skin So it turns out I didn't need to do any foraging in the hedgerows after all because we have got everything that we need here in the garden. 
I've done the base with the branches as you just saw and now I'm going to bring some of this into the display to make it a little bit softer. These bits have fallen down with the, the weight of themselves in the recent rain so I'm going to pick the bits which are a bit droopy and it'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll get a nice display and it'll tidy up any of these fallen pieces. Well, excuse the mess surrounding it, but I'm actually very chuffed with this. I think it looks lovely just with the one kind of branch, which we think is the damson. And then uh, I think this is just curled up Queen Anne's lace, the cow parsley. It looks really, really lovely. I'm going to experiment on Charlie's recommendation with not putting any water in the bars this time. It'll make it a lot easier for me to carry around um, and sometimes things actually dry out better without water so we shall see. I'm going to leave the mess on the table just for a few more minutes because I've asked Lala if she has a vase that she would like her own leaf display so I'll see if she'd like one as well um, but for now I'm going to take my secateurs back down to the garden and do a little bit more tidying. I've got a very small little tray of blooms and I've just realized that I have picked some dead heads there so I need to adjust these little top ones um, but as you can see the kitchen garden the cut flower area in the kitchen garden is completely overgrown it really does need an entire day of my time down here deadheading and cutting things back I had a real good go at the cosmos but my bin is now full um, it's just one of those things where I don't really know where to stop the cafe au lait dahlias albeit facing the wrong direction are all in bloom looking absolutely gorgeous and yet there's still lots still to open so it really so it really would be worth me spending a bit of time tidying it up down here. The Cosmos, I remember last year as well, they just get absolutely massive. I think what I'm going to do is set my phone on a five minute timer and I'm just going to run around like a crazy lady for five minutes and deadhead as much as possible. Um, and then I'm going to stop because otherwise I could literally spend the entire evening here. It's half past six now. I've been out here since about four. Quite a few emails that I need to tackle. So I'm going to do five minutes more and then head inside and do a little bit more admin. Okay, let's do this properly. Five minute timer. Let's go. doesn't look any different. <laughs> it still looks very overgrown but my piles of dead heads and my overflowing bin would say that we've managed to get at least a little maybe one percent of the work done um, but yeah I do need to stop now as much as I'd love to spend the entire evening down here. I'm going to take my blooms inside, take the recycling bins out, the green bins out ready to be collected. There's just too much for me to compost at this time of year and get on with a little bit of work. Well, I wanted to show you how lovely my display of branches fresh from our hedgerow You're looks. Out, I'm, I'm nice. branching out with my floral designs. Absolutely. Um, it does look absolutely gorgeous. And how cozy does this room look? How so good we... does she look as well? No, she's still just absolutely petrified. Do you know who she reminds me of? Have you ever seen Women in Black? Yeah. Oh, you know, the, the horror mill, the yeah, horror thing. That could be her. <gasps> On the rocking chair. Oh, I just felt like the house needed something a bit freaky. Something a bit school. horror. Don't um, say that, all the, all the ghouls will come out. We want to find something like a plant to live in there. Yeah. Because we had something there. This is new. So basically, wow. 
And you just give yourself yeah, a splinter. And I'm such a thing back. Because we're planning on using this open fire this year. Mm -hmm. We've actually still never used it. Haven't um, we? Not as an open fire. We had a stove here before. Yeah. It's all been set up correctly, but we didn't use it last year because we had the arrangement. Yes. Um, no, she she can go. She loves. Oh, living that's there. cute. No, but, um, okay, let's let let's um let the audience decide. Old lady or young lady? I don't know. She she I looks did, like something so, out of the exercise. But did She's did your so, mum hate that? No, but oh. do you know yeah. the story of that is when John was still at home. He was only like about eleven or twelve Jean. before, before mum died. About mm -hmm. here. No, before mum died. About here. And he went to a jumble sale. And you hair. bought that from a jumbo cell for mum. I think, do you know where I think it looks really good? Yeah. Here? I think she's really Charlie! <laughs> I think she's really cute. She could go here though. Um, yeah, or, but it's, you, all, you don't want to overcrowd. Because this area I'm going to properly sort out a little. I quite like her. She is a bit scary. She's I can't scary as that. <laughs> She is petrifying. Do you know what? We, we never, we never show this part of the house and it's messy, so don't it's show all of it. That's not I do, actually. I do like, I do like this a lot because it, it's, it's not about our house, but this is exactly the same as we've got a printout of it, but sadly the printout we've got has been blown up so much that you couldn't print it on something this mm. big because it would look really poor quality. Of this house? But this, yeah, but it's literally, those are the words used. So Desire when our house was for sale in the 1920s, it said desirable farm and homestead for sale, literally that, which is what drew me to that. Hmm. Obviously this is for a property. And for anybody that's not seen this area yeah. before in our many house tour videos, where do those stairs go? To nowhere. They go to the chapel. Nowhere. They go to the chapel. Dun dun dun! Um, and what is, anyway. um, what is on the left? The glass cabinet. Oh, sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Because we've not shown we've, this before. We have, but not, the in, about, and, the not in about a year and a half. So this area, we are going to have a big tidy of this study area. It's called the study, but really it's where all the posts and deliveries come, isn't it? The welly thing, I think that's the best place for it, because mm. we couldn't really find anywhere else. It was okay. for... I love Oak and Rope, the sort of old rectory. But I'm going to pinch some size fours, please. For when? Kind of leaking. For me. Oh, no. Oh, well, not from here. We've got more. Well, we've got more at the shed. Wherever. So explain the waterland orb. Well, that is basically what the walls originally were. So mm. all of under there, this is no longer Waterland Door, but all of up there is. Mm. And if you come over here, the best way of seeing it is behind this panel. So what? it's just the original British way of making... Where can you see it? This is all Waterland Door behind here. Oh, <coughs> and oh right. And plaster. Mm. So that was the original sort of way of making a wall. Yeah. And then, I, so I believe this house initially was timber framed mm. with wattle and daub. Yeah. Right? Mm. And I don't think it was ever thatched, but I'm not quite sure. No, it wouldn't have been thatched. But then it evolved from just being that small farmhouse into a bigger farmhouse, and that's when they used the stone. So in a way, mm. some of this wood, which we think probably came off ships, is, is actually older than the stone walls. Wow. Um, if so it's this original. could have been a pirate ship. Well, that, that could have been, yeah. A merchant navy, wow. probably, but... Jack, but yeah. Captain Jack Sparrow could have sailed in the Could have. Could, could have been Napoleon. Should we just quickly show where Dexter's chosen to sit? The most important chair. Daddy, I only sit in regal places. No. You are such You're a lovely so chair. You're so lovely. I love how he wags because he knows he's about to get attention. You're lovely. Come on. You're Come so down. lovely. Daddy, I'm careful not how you pick me up. I'm in this part of the house, are I'm we? so lovely. And then. Right, so you bought a new log store. Yeah, because primarily because the one that was here before, if you remember, and I'll show you where it is now. It kind of took up a lot of space, and even you said it feels like there's something. And this is obviously just a lot nicer for this area because this mm. door goes through to the study. But is it meant to be like it. a baby's cradle or something? <clears throat> I don't know what they originally used them for. Um, I know that the other one we've got was looks it was like great... where she would banish naughty children in maybe. in a crate. Anyway. Yeah, maybe. This is the swear jar, by the way. <laughs> you noticed this. Is there anything in it? This is from a uh, navel or something. That it's, been oh, it's all part of a... Yeah. Did you yeah. polish that? No, it's... Um, cash room? Cash room oh, yeah. um, Right, and then we come through to the coldest room in the house right now. The coldest the room in the house? <laughs> oh, there's a puppy in here! A puppy dog? Is there a puppy dog? Oh, it's a little boy! It's a little oh, small doggy. So that now I think looks a lot better there. Lovely. And to be completely honest, it's pretty crucial having it there because it becomes becoming a right faff when we have this fire yeah, to keep going party. through there to get yeah. wood. And I, Needs I, to be something I'm learning from the more the more books and the more places we go. Oops. 
I'm not, you don't want a room to feel cluttered, but there's a very fine line between clutter and really cosy. Because you need objects in the room to make it feel cosy. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like before this room... We still was... haven't painted the I on there, so it's your full initials. No, and we, we, this rug is not staying like this. We're planning on getting a much bigger rug in here, and I think this needs to go the other way around on top. Yeah, I think it does need but to go the other way around. Do you, yeah, anyway. do, you, do you know what I think it needs to do? We need to get another similar rug, and then we get the big fitted rug in here, and then we layer these two over it, and they look quite good. Yeah. And this is the new bar trolley. Very nice. From uh, Albion Pearl, Albion yep. Pearl mm -hmm. which was actually via the core, uh, via the Park Fair okay. Fate. Yep. So it's feeling a bit cosy yeah. in here. And then I swapped this because that was a mirror before, which just made no mm. sense. Ooh. And that, obviously, artwork you can chop and change. Now we've got the. I just felt it was a bit autumnal and a bit lovely. Yeah. Well, we only ever come in here in autumn and winter. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> lovely. And then it looks, yeah, let's do it. And it looks quite cosy. I don't know how it looks on your. Oh, looks lovely. Oh, no, no, no. When you turn all the lamps on, mm. I kind of almost don't like having the wall lights on because when you've got them off, it's just so mm. much yeah. neat, neat, cosier. Are we going to have a roast on Sunday? I think we're going to have our first roast of the season. Neat, neat. Roast pork. Excuse me, my young friend. Daddy, I'm going to I'm help going to you. I'm going to help you. Oh no, we don't know what's happening. But I won't. I won't get off. Right, let's get this down here. Get it down, you mate. Get it down, you Zulu warrior. Excuse me, small. And yet perfectly formed. Right. Because away from the fire is also good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Although this is pretty. No, but I would. If you were leaving this room unattended, I would always roll back the carpet. Yeah. I do. used to do it, Lara. Don't you remember? Yeah. The boss has spoken. Always. Right. I don't know if that looks quite right either, but it's because it's just ultimately because we need another rug in here, aren't we? What say you, Dexie? What say you? Dexie? Hello, chicken nugget. <coughs> Hello, my sweet little boy. Whenever I crouch down, he straight away comes for kisses. I'm lovely. It's like in the mornings, they always, it doesn't matter where they've been sleeping, so most mornings I've come and they've both been in the in a bed each. Yes. Before they used to be all over the place, particularly Dickens would be on the no. back of the sofa. But the minute I sit down with my coffee, they're there. Oh yes, it's our favourite time of day. At the side of me. Lovely boy. As soon as mummy gets up in the morning, yes. she kisses us. She doesn't even check her phone. So she room, she kisses us for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Favourite room. It could even go a bit that way. It could. I mean, look, it, it's wherever we put it, it's going to look weird because it's not kind of a finished, finished article. I do love that painting there, though. I think that was a good purchase. Yeah, because it really does look, look like our village. Said it looks like our village. Yes, absolutely. Even Martin said, so is that, is that Yeah, because the church even has the same, like, end yeah. feature. And it's a similar view of the church that yeah, you get yeah. from... Not from, the, from the, the garden, from but from steps. there. No, yeah, no, that's the remember. Where there are loads of houses. Um, yeah. We're in here, we have to give a huge shout out to wonderful Andrew, who you probably will remember is our painter decorator. He has actually recreated, he's painted, like, is it called Trompe Luel when it looks so real, but actually it's not. He's painted our, what is it? Um, well, we've got new thermostats. Thermostats. Our, our plan to save on money and be more sustainable. But it used to be an ugly white box and Andrew has painted it and it actually looks like it's a wood cover. But this is all hand detailed. Yeah. Very clever. And very clever. the smoke alarm up there, he's done the exact same it's with. A, it's a security sensor. Very, very clever. What's happened to me? I ripped it down because we had those issues, didn't we? I ordered a new one. 